Welcome back. In our top business story, Etihad Railway and Abu Dhabi National Oil Company signed an agreement whereby the master developer and operator of the UAE's National Railway will build the first phase of its railway network. The 266-kilometer Shah Habshan Rouvay section, a part of the 1,200-kilometer long rail network, will be built to, to transport granulated sulfur from Adnox oil and gas fields. The Habshan Ruvais link is scheduled for completion by the end of 2013 and the Shah Gas Field Ruvais link by the end of 2014, according to the agreement. Etihad Railway's 40 billion dirham network will be built in several phases to link the largest cities and industrial centers of the UAE, as well as to link the Emirates to the other five countries of the GCC. Dubai's non-oil trade with the Netherlands reached 3.3 billion dirhams in the first half of this year. That's according to Dubai Chamber of Commerce and Industry data. Imports from the Netherlands to Dubai summed up to 2.3 billion dirhams, while exports and re-exports stood at 1 billion dirhams. One reason for the strong ties between Dubai and the European country is that many Dutch companies see the Emirates as a gateway to do business in the Middle East, Africa and Asia. His Excellency Abdul Rahman Saif al Gurair, the chairman of the Dubai Chamber, said. He especially encouraged Dutch businesses to explore more opportunities in the renewable energy sector here in Dubai. Emirates MED, the UAE's largest bank by assets, announced its financial results today, showing an operating profit of 5 billion dirhams for the first nine months of the year and 1.8 billion dirhams for the third quarter. The lender, which is over 55% owned by the Dubai government, recorded a net profit of 175 million dirhams for the three months to September 30th, compared with 424 million for the same period in 2010, a statement to the Dubai Bourse said on Monday. That's a decline of 60% as loan impairment allowances rose to 1.6 billion dirhams, compared with 1.2 this time last year. Earnings per share, however, rose by 23% to 38 fills per share. Islamic home finance provider Tamwil also announced its financial results today. For the first nine months of this year, Tamwil reported a net profit of 71 million dirhams. That's a plus of nearly 300% compared to the same period last year. Tamwil shares are up 0.9% today. With that, let's now look at the stock markets here in the UAE and across the region. World Business News. European Union leaders made some progress toward a strategy to fight the Eurozone sovereign debt crisis on Sunday. By Wednesday, they want to agree on reducing Greece's debt burden, strengthening European banks and maximizing the firepower of the zone's rescue fund to stop the contagion from engulfing bigger states. The bank recapitalization plan is the easiest piece of the bargain. EU banks are said to have to raise up to 108 billion euros to boost their Tier 1 capital ratios to 9%. However, there remains disagreement on the other two measures, steps to boost the firepower of the 440 billion euro EFSF and whether to turn it into a bank or not, and how large the losses will be for holders of Greek government bonds should the country default. Initially, a 21% so-called haircut was discussed in July, now it could add up to 60%, meaning lenders would have to write down 60% of the value of each Greek bond, causing a lot of financial distress for the region's banks. We are fighting things that originated, in part, decades ago. It's not about a crisis of our currency. On Wednesday, it won't be the last step that we'll take. That's why, when we talk about the future, that we must probably strengthen our control mechanisms in the Eurogroup. That's why there'll be many steps to be taken. Further work is still needed as no concrete decisions have yet been made. Hopefully, the Eurozone leaders will take the decisions necessary in the follow-up Eurozone summit on Wednesday. We ask Gorov Kashyap, head of DGCX Trading at Alpari Middle East DMCC, what this all means for Euro-US dollar trading this week and what other events he has on his agenda. 
We've seen the EU summit come and go from this past Sunday, and to be quite honest, we didn't have any major developments uh, emerging from those meetings, just more and more rhetoric and more and more delayed till the ine inevitable announcement on Wednesday. Now, what we can expect to see from these meetings from this past Sunday is that although they do have a plan, we cannot expect to see a very bold plan from, uh, from behalf of the EU. So what we can expect to see in trading this week will be continued volatile and choppy trading conditions similar to last week's trading conditions. We can expect to see the Euro USD to move a little bit higher on improving optimism regarding this plan. But overall, Linda, I question the long-term prospects of the Euro. Uh, data from this past Friday showed the CFTC reporting that uh, the net short positions in the Euro USD increased, which means that the recent rally in the Euro USD as, as a result of a short covering squeeze. So we look at resistance in the Euro probably around 140 to 141. That's of course if we break this 139 level. Uh, after that, we keep the highest uh, resistance at 143. The support comes in Euro at 136.50. Uh, of course, we're gonna wait and watch to see how developments come out of the Eurozone in a very choppy trading week for the Euro. With regards to the US, we have a consumer confidence readings on Tuesday. That's followed by durable goods on Wednesday. And of course, the headline number from the US will be quarter three GDP readings. Uh, that is expected to come in at 2.5% up from 1.2% in Q2, and of course we continue to watch the earnings from the US amongst a very, very good uh, quarter three in earnings uh, in US stock markets. Good economic data out of China boosted Asian shares this morning. China's vast manufacturing sector expanded moderately in October to snap three months of contraction, soothing fears of an abrupt slowdown in the world's second largest economy. The flash PMI, a snapshot of the month factory activity, rose to 51.1 points in October, from September's reading of 59.9 as new orders expanded. For the first time since June, the PMI index surpassed the 50-point level, the threshold when output starts expanding. Before we go, here's a quick overview of the oil, precious metals and currency markets. And after that, we have the day's sports news for you.